As we turn to the final page of our first section, the basic song section, we come to our last two tracks. The first of which is titled, Where is the Spring? So, of course, this is another children's nursery rhyme, but these are the best to begin with uh, because the melody is so catchy. You know, it's the kind of song that gets stuck in your head. These are great songs for us to learn notation. Um, you know, we start to associate those number values very quickly because we can hear the tune. You know, we memorize it, internalize it very quickly. And we can also work on these different progressions, you know, all these different drills that happen. Uh, they're simple, uh, but they're very comprehensive. So it's a great place to start. However, this particular song is going to challenge you a little bit. This is a pattern that I'm going to repeat uh, throughout the text. So in every section, there's going to be at least one song that we're going to pressure test everything that you've learned so far. Most of the time, we're going to do that testing by increasing the tempo. So raising uh, the BPM to a faster speed. Okay. So you'll notice at the beginning of this song, our BPM equals 120. So you can tell it's a very bright, upbeat, fast paced song. Okay. This is going to put a few things uh, into testing. It's going to be a challenge because you're going to have to work on the progressions. You're going to have to be able to adapt very quickly. And for that reason, you want to be very comfortable, very relaxed. Okay. So let's review a few of the things that happen in the notation. First off, as you walk through it, you can see we have those zeros. We have those resting pauses. Um, and you'll notice in the first two lines, especially, there's no breath marks. So remember, anytime we have that zero, that's a substitute also for a breath. Uh, just because it's a wind instrument, anytime we pause the sound, it's just a good opportunity for us to breathe in, recover that inhale, uh, prepare for the next phrase. So you can pencil that in, but it's not notated. So there is no breath mark written, uh, but that's kind of a given when you see a zero, for example. Then moving forward, as we get to line three and four, you recognize a lot of uh, little progressions that happen with one number being repeated a few times. So we have four, two, in line four, we have one and five, right? So we have this like three or four times repeating a single note, right? And because they're not bracketed together, because they're not sustains with dashes, each of those notes has to be re-articulated. So this is going to be the thing that I think is going to be very challenging for this piece is that re-articulation at a faster pace, okay? Because if we review, when we re-articulate, that means that whatever the lowest uh, sound hole position is, we open and close that briefly. And we don't want to open it so much to where you hear the sound of the higher pitch. We just want to do it enough to where you hear that single pitch resetting. Okay. So it's a very subtle, very brief, uh, very relaxed motion. It's kind of like a flutter in a way. Um, and so for that, if you're, if you're very tense and you're kind of still squeezing the, the flute, you have this very tense grip. When you lift the finger and go back down, you're going to have a very jolting, a very jarring sound, right? So we want to keep it very soft, but we do want to hear that rearticulation, right? Now, the difficulty of this is we tend to have a few uh, fingers that we rely on, right? We normally rely on the index and the thumb quite a lot, which I think is fine. Like if you have a lower uh, position, lower register, you can rearticulate with the one, um, but that's going to be a special technique that we haven't learned yet. So we also do want to build up some dexterity with the small finger, the pinky finger, and with our ring finger uh, on the on the fifth hole here. So one and five, we can also use to rearticulate positions one and positions five. Okay, and so we do want to uh, work on that dexterity. Again, if you're playing at a really fast speed, you can rearticulate with your index fingers. So lower position, we can use the right hand, and the mid position, we can use the left hand. Um, and you can kind of get away with that at a fast speed, uh, but I, I recommend you to, to try it, even if it's just at a lower pace, and try that rearticulation. Okay? Um, but yeah, we're going to be playing this at a faster speed, but first let's kind of walk through it uh, so you can hear the rearticulation happening. Okay? So the song will sound like this at a slower pace. Uh, follow the next video to get the full speed. But again, that's something that we can add. So that'll be the way you test and challenge yourself. Okay? So this is Where is the Spring at a slower pace and pay attention to the re-articulations. Okay?
Okay, so very simple, you see, just really taking my time to go through each progression. And, and you will kind of notice that uh, you can vary it a little bit, right? Because we're gonna have a lot of repeating notes. So if we step that up just a little bit, you can see how that pinky is going to be a little bit difficult to rearticulate. So if we start, uh, we'll start midway through the third line. And actually there at that four, that's a good place to review. Remember there, we're gonna kind of roll and just touch the back hole, right? So it's, there is a technique where we kind of flutter like this uh, and kind of go into the flute pressing the thumb. But that can be pretty uh, hard in the beginning and also it's more for a trill, something that we repeat for a long time. For this, because we just want to sound it off a few beats, it's nice to do this roll. And I recommend not going up and then down. I actually, I think it's better to stay in time to go up and lift, come back down and lift again. Okay, so that, that um, those four fours, remember I have two quarter beats, a half beat and another half beat, right? So it goes, right? Right, that's the middle of the third line. Right, so we'll continue on from there and then just pay attention to four, two, five, oh, four, two, one, and five. Sorry. So line three and four, a lot of rearticulation that happens there. And you can see how, okay, the five is going to be a little bit slow. The one is going to be a little slow. And so when we speed that up and we play at full speed, it's going to be pretty difficult to keep up with it. So occasionally we can also play four and six and two the same, but then we can play one rearticulating the seventh hole and we can play five rearticulating the fourth hole. Okay. So about the same thing we have. And we can get away with using the index fingers in those positions, uh, but I recommend to, to try it out both ways. Um, you can also add in variety as you get more comfortable, um, but stick with basic and then the variation. Okay. And that'll be a really good song for you to work on. I think this is one of those ones that you can come back and kind of even warm up with to challenge yourself because that rearticulation is something that we always struggle with uh, as the weather gets more cold and you're playing, uh, trying to warm up your flute, warm up your hands, uh, you'll notice that your, your response time is a little slow. Very normal, just take it one step at a time. Uh, and yeah, hopefully in no time you're playing this bright song just in time for spring. All right, well, we'll catch you in the next lesson. Get your copy of the Introduction to the Dong Xiao, now on sale at Amazon.